Welcome to Church of the Risen Savior as today we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. Today's gospel tells the story of Jesus cleansing the temple. There is some historical perspective to consider as you hear the gospel today. First of all, the story tells of money changers in the temple. It was necessary for those money changers to be there. People had to exchange Roman denarii and Greek drachmas for Tyrian shekels, as they were the only currency acceptable for paying the temple tax. As a side note, it was the Tyrian shekel that subsequently gained notoriety as a likely mode of payment for Judas Iscariot. The story also tells of animals in the temple. They were necessary as well. They were needed for sacrifice. However, there was always a concern of an escaped animal entering the Holy of Holies, which is the most sacred place in the Jewish tradition. For this reason, the animals had been kept outside the temple per se. However, it is believed that it was under Caiaphas that this practice changed and the animals were allowed inside the temple. It is believed that this change would have been perceived by Jesus and his followers as an abuse. Pope Francis gave great perspective when he spoke about this gospel by saying, these words help us to reject the danger of making our soul, which is God's abode, a marketplace. Have we made our soul a marketplace? As we continue on our Lenten journey, what are some things that could or should be driven out of the temple of our soul? Maybe it's time for a little spring cleaning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we gather now for the third Sunday in this Lenten season of turning more and more to God and to what is of God, let us acknowledge anew our constant dependence on the strength of God's saving mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to God and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you continue to intercede for us with the Heavenly Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus, 
In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O God. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and the oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jewish leaders answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jewish leaders said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was quite the table-turning experience, completely overturning what they were supposed to do. The people were expected to buy an animal to be sacrificed in the temple for the atonement of their sins to be made right with God and they were expected to change those Roman coins that had the head of the Roman emperor on there, claiming that he was God. They had to exchange those coins for ones that had no such image on them. It was confusing. It was shocking. It was disturbing for them. But <clears throat> there was even more table turning going on something else that was disturbing and shocking, that he, Jesus, as the crucified and risen one, would be the new temple, the dwelling of God, the way to encounter God. No longer would there be a need to sacrifice a pigeon or an ox or a lamb because he, Jesus, would be the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world once and for all. Through his suffering and death and resurrection, we have this great 
an everlasting atonement, being made right with God. Now, John was writing his gospel around 90 AD, and the temple in Jerusalem had been destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans. So already, those early Christians to whom the evangelist John was writing, and us into this century experience the redeeming power of Christ, that power to to raise us up, to lift us up out of whatever is death-like or not of God. And there's even more yet about table turning, about completely overturning things, and it has to do with why we hear this gospel and ponder this gospel in Lent, on this third Sunday of Lent. Because there's an important question for us. What kind of overturning What kind of table turning is God asking of us now in our minds, our attitudes, our hearts, our behavior, our relationships in our society? We might experience that intervention of God that desire of God to do some table-turning, some overturning, through the sting of our conscience. Perhaps even as we heard the Ten Commandments read for us in that first reading, as if God is holding up a mirror to us. Do you see what you are doing? Do you hear what you are doing or what you are not doing for the good of others? We might experience that desire of God to want want to do overturning in our lives through what I would call a tug in the heart, a challenge that wells up from deep within. I need to stop this behavior. I need to talk with this person. I need to watch my language, what comes out of my mouth. And we might also experience God wanting to do overturning in our lives by a feeling we might have of being disturbed or bothered by wastefulness in our society or the pollution of our planet and find ourselves wanting to become an advocate for the earth, to preserve and protect the earth, our common home, with a particular action on our part to do something that is good for the earth. There was some dramatic table turning that day in the temple area in Jerusalem. What kind of table turning does God want to do this Lent in your life, in my life?
As members of the body of Christ, on our Lenten journey, let us together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Mindful of our dependence on God's constant saving mercy, let us pray. For the church, that we may grow in awareness of our dignity as temples of the Holy Spirit, we pray, merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of renewal, that God's covenant with us will move our hearts to a deeper relationship with God and greater service to our neighbors, we pray, merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of integrity, that we recognize ourselves as servants of God, honoring God's name by our words and deeds, and never attempting to use God for our own benefit, we pray, merciful God, hear our prayer. For a deeper appreciation of the commandments, that we may allow the wisdom and vision of the commandments given to Moses to form our conscience and guide our decisions, we pray, merciful merciful Lord, hear our prayer for a cleansing of the temple of our hearts, that God will free us from all that enslaves us and help us to offer our self-sacrificing service to God and others, we pray. Merciful Merciful Lord, hear hear our prayer. For those who are ill and are suffering, may they find hope and healing, including Carol Stirner, we pray. Merciful Merciful Lord, hear hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they rest in the arms of God, we pray. Merciful Merciful Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. O merciful Lord, hear these prayers we offer as we continue our Lenten journey through Christ our Lord. Amen.
secure with peace faithfulness will be your joy long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new My sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, who is almighty and ever living. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. O Lord, be pleased with the sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord God, almighty and eternal. For you have given us, your children, a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of our hearts, that freed from disordered affections, we might so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all of the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not, <clears throat> and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as we partake of this one bread and one chalice, we may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope, and Bernard, our bishop, help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray together for a fuller coming of God's kingdom on our earth as the Lord Jesus has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share a greeting of peace. This loaf of bread that we break, this cup of wine that we bless,
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold, the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not I'm worthy, not worthy that, that you should, you should enter, enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the word, word and my soul, and my soul shall, be shall be healed. Let us stand to complete our prayer. O Lord, as we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. This week we'll have a word and communion service on Monday morning and a daily mass on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday morning, all of them at nine o'clock. And we'll have Stations of the Cross in the church on Friday evening at 7 p.m. 
Your support is needed to make our two-part Lenten donation drive a success. This Monday through next Sunday, March 14, is part one, where our Human Trafficking Committee and Faith Formation families are collecting personal hygiene items for breaking free, which serves victims of human trafficking. You can drop off items during office hours at, in our building at our Saturday curbside option or if you come to Mass here next Saturday or Sunday. On our parish website, click on News and Links for more information. Also, the bulletin has more information. A reminder that envelopes for Easter flower donations are available in the back of the church where you can make a donation in honor of a loved one and help provide flowers for uh, the Easter season. You can also mail in a donation with a note about what it is for. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth to glorify the Lord with our lives. Thanks be to God.